Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Okay, the last time I, I went in and got her shedding the other day and wanted to give this Papua and Taipan juvenile some water and it nearly uh, uh, came out and wanted to kill me. Oof, oof. Dead. It's dead. Just the way you like things. Hi. Just pretend I'm not here. No, no, no. Just eat your, uh, uh your mouse. <laughs> I just, uh, don't want to play with her. She is just, uh, too, uh, too difficult, let's say. Okay, I've seen her lurking around the front here, so let's see what she's up to. I see you've uh, put that uh, mouse uh, where it belongs, back in your tummy. You eat that and don't uh, disengage because if you, close, uh, if you disengage and your mouth is free, I'm going to shut the cage and uh, I'll just be done with you. And you simply uh, do not want any sort of encounter with her because she's hell on wheels. Just to keep her cage moist. I'm going to be away this week again. So, this is all the water and, uh, and care that she'll get because I don't allow Lori, and Lori doesn't want to, uh, have anything to do with this snake. And that's sort of a good thing because I don't even really want to much to do with this snake. This is a very dangerous little snake. Uh, you know, I work with a lot of snakes, uh, and her parents are much easier to deal with, even though they're larger and more deadly. This snake is very aggressive and really doesn't sort of like me. I don't know why, I haven't done anything bad to it, but it's just, uh, just a foul little beast. As soon as the weather gets good, she'll be going off to uh, Jim Harrison at the Kentucky Reptile Zoo, and he can deal with her. Walk your fangs to the nose. There we go. Yeah, it's unfortunate. She doesn't have the orange stripe down her back, or it's not so pronounced like her parents do. Maybe it'll come in a little bit with age. 
that's certainly one of the identifying features of the Papua New Guinea Taipan uh, versus the mainland uh, Taipans. Here we go. Let's pull backwards away from the mouse to eat it. Okay, she's finishing up and I'm going to shut this uh, so when that mouth is uh, completely clear of food, uh, uh, there's no chance of her wreaking havoc with me today. Well, I don't know if they're hooked up, but the male type in is certainly uh, trying his damnedest and now that I came in the room, the female is like, ooh, is there going to be something to eat soon? Somebody's in a very grumpy mood today. Eh? You want a drink? Eh? Have a drink anyway. Yeah. Oh, you don't like Mr. <laughs> Mr. Spray Bottle, huh? Oh, you are in a grumpy mood. Well, I'm a nice drink, though. Didn't you get enough to eat yesterday? Hmm? He only got one pinky yesterday. Maybe he wants some more, huh? You are in a foul mood. I've never seen you in a foul mood before. You're generally a pretty good-natured snake, huh? For those that don't know, this is a Therus squamagera, variable bush viper. This guy is from the Congo. I'm sorry, Cameroon. Oh, he is foul. He is a foul little dude. All right, we'll see if we can rustle you up with some additional grub there, dude. Yeah, I'm standing here feeding Miss Crate, and I look up and I see this. He's like, hey, what about me? So what about you, dude? Huh? Huh? Are you anxious? Huh? There you go. Good shot. This is the Siamese Peninsula Pit Viper, Popia Fukata. He's a very nice guy. I like him a lot. He's a wild caught import. And he seems to be doing quite well. Enjoy your meal. Well, it's sort of graduation time. This little blighter is one of the babies uh, uh, born to this very large 
Blue Insularis Pit Viper, the big gal in there. There's a male in with her now. But this little blighter uh, is doing exceptionally well. Very attractive uh, young snake. Probably a female because it's eating quite well on its own. It's time that we graduate it to a nice little enclosure so we could fully appreciate uh, the snake's beauty. Here you go. I know. I know. This is all new, huh? You know, I really, really hate moving snakes from place to place, even if it's to upgrade their quarters because a snake that has been doing well in the bin or in another cage will sometimes not be doing so well in its new and hap uh, new habitat so uh, we'll see there's a new place to explore and uh, places to hide as well as places to sun itself and it'll actually get some light rather than staying in the dark all the time. Oh, you get a nice little hidey hole in there, huh? Yeah, I sort of left that open in, as in purpose, but on purpose, but we'll see uh, where the little guy ends up. Fed yesterday, so I don't have to worry about him for a few days. Well, it's summertime and we lost electricity during the day and the snakes that are normally night feeders, <laughs> this perp here, Trimacerus or Cryptolytrops purpula maculatus, the junk, junkyard dog of venomous snakes. This snake loves to strike and bite it is one of the foulest temper snakes that you might ever come across. Actually, she gives saw scales a run for the money for foulness. Um, she never ever comes out to visit unless it's nighttime. She's one of our night uh, specialists. And she got tricked into coming out. When the lights came back on, she was on her perch. Oh! And being foul <laughs> as, as in the, the nose. day is long. And now she's going to be even fouler because she's embarrassed because she whacked her nose. So we're going to let you uh, just chill out because we have other fish to fry. As you wag your tail. Don't hit the glass. <laughs> well, I see the male southwestern Rattlesnake is very interested in something to eat. Boy, is he ever. Get your hand out of the way. <laughs> yes, yes. We open these with quite a uh, amount, large amount of caution uh, because they do have a serious feeding response. That's the male father of the yearling babies, which I'm still force feeding for the most part. That's why I didn't breed them this year. They're just. The babies are just horrendous uh, to get feeding. My friend Chip Cochran, who's a, a venom researcher at, at Loma Linda in California, uh, he has baby uh, uh, pyrus, uh, crotalus pyrus like these uh, that are a year old, and he's still force feeding some of those too. They're just we just whatever it is we just don't have what they normally eat at their side probably skinks and other small lizards and next we'll do the female also has a very good appetite these aren't terribly warm right now because I got distracted when they were all warmed up and I had to answer a couple of questions on my National Snake Bite support page. As you can see, she was uh, uh, very happy to see that. And of course, these two guys, if I fed them everything they wanted to eat, they would explode. So uh, I've really cut them back to get their weight down a little bit. Uh, so they get one mouse every uh, every week now, uh, and even that I think is is maybe too much. 
I think they probably don't agree. <laughs> no, they don't agree, but it's for their own well-being. Uh, uh, this is the way we do things. Hey, dude, why do you make your uh, window so dirty all the time, huh? And he's always snotting up the windows. It's yeah. nasty. He's, he's generally a, a pretty good guy. Hi, how are you doing? Are you interested in something to eat? That's that's what he that's when he's most dangerous, although he can be an asshole. But for the most time he's pretty relaxed. He really likes uh, his tucker. And if your fingers are too close when he does that or it, you know, he doesn't discern between mouse and finger. Um, and that's a problem. He's a very lovely snake other than that. I've had him since he was a baby. He was kept to born and bred. Are you worried out by the camera, dude, huh? All right. Okay, good job. Take it back <laughs> inside, and I'll shut this, and no one will bother you. Would you like another, huh? Would you like another, huh? There you go. Good job. You know, water culvers have this exquisite eye. Um, it's not so apparent in this uh, unnamed species, but in the ringed water culvers, it's it's beautiful, isn't it, sweetie? Oh yes. Um, okay. Well, you know, look. Take it in there, and you know, when you're done, I'll give you another one. Now this is the painted lance head, Bothrops or Bothrioides, whichever you prefer, Diporus. Uh, she's affectionately known as Miss Bobbit uh, because the male uh, that was in with her um, lost his junk because he bred with her uh, so long and so hard. He couldn't uh, lose his erection. It lasted more than four hours and became necrotic and fell off. And it eventually, that problem killed him, I believe. Um, she's a, a pretty nice snake. Gen generally, you know, good disposition. She likes to hide under uh, the bush, although when she's going to shed, she'll go into her hut. Not much more to be said. I've got two youngsters. Uh, the male, when he gets some size to him, and perhaps may not be such a good looking snack to her, I may breed her again. Uh, I managed to catch one of the synchronized eating team uh, members uh, uh, starting uh, to shed out. Uh, he's in a pretty sparse cage, so he was really having some difficulty uh, finding something to uh, rub against to get the shed really sort of moving. So I'm um, taking a bit of a risk. Uh, I don't think he's going to try to decide to swing around and be ornery about it. Yeah, I know, dude. Keep going, you're doing good. Now, to be a proper member of the synchronized eating team, you only have to have one functional eye. Um, the reason why they don't have one, only one functional eye is uh, um, they generally have a tendency to bite each other in the face when you put them in the breed or attempt to breed and um, so this male and the female across the room have uh, blind eyes on opposite sides because uh, that's how things worked out.
These are some of the coolest looking vipers from Uzbekistan that my friends and I managed to acquire a bunch of them. Uh, uh, I think 2007-ish. So I've had this guy and uh, uh, the other two for about 10 years. Um, I cooled them down to try to get them to breed last year and uh, they almost didn't make it out. Um, so I didn't cool them down this year and therefore, uh, although this guy tried to breed, uh, I don't think there's going to be any, uh, any eggs uh, uh, coming uh, soon, if at all. Uh, it's just the way it goes. Now you see, he obviously cannot fit in that hut, but I put that in there so you have something to start his, uh, his shedding on. That was rough because the walls of the cage are pretty small, smooth. So I'm trying to assist him. I will put uh, some additional uh, furniture in here for him at, uh, at some later date. Now right now we've got his functional eye facing towards us. These guys are really, really good eaters. Uh, a little bit of a defensive posture there. Uh, um, uh, these certainly are amongst my favorite vipers, unfortunately. I'll probably never ever see any more in my lifetime. Unless of course I go to Uzbekistan and that's not likely to happen. Hi, bud. It's sort of hanging out here because I'll uh, collect the shed. Uh, uh, all my sheddings go to uh, uh, Eden Bio, who makes uh, some very nice uh, jewelry type items or cell phone cases. Uh, out of their shed skins and this way we don't have to kill animals, reptiles in particular, uh, to make uh, fashion items from. Uh, we like the snake skin alive and on them and fortunately the snakes uh, shed their skin periodically just to, uh, to renew uh, their surface of their skin to grow a little bit and also to get rid of external parasites so either he's aggravated with me or he's just taking a breather I really think he's aggravated because I'm talking too much and disturbing him so we're gonna let him finish up